everyone today I will be sharing with you how I take an experimental color palette and translate it into an artwork so it will be something small um, it won't be like a you know complete long piece but I thought what would be interesting is that if I translated the same color palette into perhaps three different styles of work. So I like to do uh, portraits, faces. Um, I like to do botanical art and abstract art. So basically, um, first of all, what I have done is again, gone through my art supplies and matched certain colors to, it's not the blues here in case you wonder but it's the greens matched uh, different supplies to kind of that sort of a color palette and then I will be picking things out. Typically I like to work in a limited contemporary style so I don't like to overcomplicate things because then I find things start to look overdone very quickly. Another thing I want to say is that although I like this paper and I love how pencil looks on it, I really kind of don't enjoy off-white paper. I much prefer how things look on white. It's just more crisper and it kind of goes better with my style, I feel like. So if I look through some of the abstracts that I've done here, I find that on white paper it just pops much better um, but I'll try it on this paper regardlessly so let's start with some art supplies so I've got a number of things let's start with the Bosca markers and just sort of swatch them so after a bit of mixing it's doing a bit better but still not great <laughs> okay so we've got here fuchsia Uniposca, then we have this color is burgundy, but I remember it to be much darker than I like. So that's that. Then let's do Tombow markers. So they are lovely because they are water soluble and on the other end you have this fine tip which creates the cutest little marks so that works quite well for me i'm going to use a water brush to dilute or not to dilute but to create a watercolor effect like so and then we've got a few other colors here. Now I don't remember which one would work the best. So we'll figure it out. So in case you wonder, the first color was 757. This is 133. So typically with tombos, although you can soften the edge of the lighter colors, the darker colors look the best in that watercolor effect. No, that's not the color I like at all. So that's this one here, I don't like that. And now we have this darker, no, that's also not the color. Okay, so I won't bother with those. Then we have some oil pastels, and this is moss green. And this is a lovely color. Trouble, of course, is they don't uh, dry. So I have a fixative, which I'll try to spray on the paper later just to help it a bit, but especially if you use it quite thickly. I think I'll just smudge it a bit more. 
I'm just hoping that now that I have smudged it and created the thinner layer that it will be uh, better on paper after the fixative. So then I pulled out another color, Crimson Aubergine. I didn't swatch this one out. See, the trouble is I like to press really hard with my pencils and basically it just all will start to transfer, but I think I'm just not going to care much in this sketchbook. It's all meant to be like quite experimental. So there we go. This is a watercolor pencil. And the one that has made it to my favorite colors is this one here. And this is dark plum. That's a lovely color. Then we have some real darkness here, like so. So essentially what we're doing is matching the colors to the color palette. We can mix some colors as well, or sometimes when I'm not in the mood, I just go straight from the bottle. And that is also quite quite a fun thing to do. So this is lovely color. So I won't be able to build this one up too much. And the reason for it is that it's a high flow. High flow acrylic as opposed to heavy body means that you can use it like watercolor so you can really water it out and create super light kind of washes you can do all sorts of things and then of course while things are wet you can run your pencils into them and see what happens it can mix together it can create sort of these more intense marks because you can see once it's dry the pencil it won't be as strong but then of course we can add a bit of water and get the color flowing so you can do a number of things with them and this is how i like using them as well and then we have got what do we have here? Designer gouache by Windsor Newton. This is linden green. Such a beautiful color. But um, it's it has opacity to it. So it's not like transparent like a watercolor would be. So if you wanted a middle ground of having some sort of opacity to your work, this is a good color to go for like that also make sure after you run your pencil in this sort of um, acrylic paint that the nib is cleaned out because otherwise it will dry to it and then I would love to use this oil stick but that means I won't be able to use the sketchbook for a few days because it takes a few days to dry so I won't be swatching that in there. Now the idea here is that I pick out certain colors and I stick to it and for instance let's say I want to paint the face I will basically add a bit of this color I would start always with watercolor first. All of these will be sort of more abstract. So that will be the face, roughly speaking. Um, I'll do some sort of a abstract here. And then I'll do botanical on this one. So let's say here is going to be abstract. 
like so. And then in, in terms of the botanical, typically I like to draw something out first. Um, hmm, let's see. Um, something like that. I'm holding the pan quite far away so that I'm achieving a more loose style. These are, I'm trying <laughs> to have them more um, loose and abstract so it's not too um, I don't know, probably abstract would not be the right word to describe these. I'd say maybe more modern illustration. So let's say that's probably it. And then I'll just create a few more leaves around here. Like so, just to balance it out. So that's our flower botanical illustration like so and then a little bit of detail just here okay here we go so we've got abstract botanical and face now how am i going to keep the same color palette throughout i will try to stick to the same colors roughly speaking so because this is kind of abstract I'm not going to stay within the lines I'm just going to co cover certain areas of the petals and then I'm going to you know I'm starting to get a feel for this I'm going to go into these pencils which are the favorites so if you remember in that video recently so I'm just picking out now darker green here just to add a bit of detail to the petals and to the leaves now this is a water color pencil which means it's great to go into water and this is how I like using them the other option that I like to do is, let me pick another color, is basically just using them like so and then going over with water. So I like to maintain some white in my illustrations and then just kind of softening some of the lines and then if I wanted something a bit more intense I'm just going to see if I have any darker green what's this one here paints gray well in that case I think I might start adding a little bit of contrast here and I'm going to go in with that darker color and just add it in certain areas, like so. And at this point, I'm just going to get the pencil mixed with a bit of water and some of the colors from before. And adding a little bit of pink. Okay, so I think this is good. Maybe just a touch more round here. We can pull that pink out. That's it. I don't want to overdo it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is, uh, so this has now more than the face and the abstract. So let's go into the face. Um, so with the face, I will try to be abstract, but we'll see. I mean, I haven't done a face in a really, really long time. 
So there you go, that's my excuse. Um, I'm going to just create some some detail here and keeping it abstract with a face is not the easiest thing but we'll try also talking throughout <laughs> I find it not easy so that's that let's go into abstract now with the abstract that needs to be completely dry for a pencil so I think let's see let's go with this color right here probably not dry enough but we can try and do it I'm just going to add a few marks just little dots they will stay permanent even if you go over with like some water because it's acrylic paint in the marker Okay, so let's say about there, although it's tempting to just continue adding these um, dots throughout. So here we have got something happening, which I'm not sure about just yet. And then, let's see, I want to add some green in here. So there's some left just at the top. So I'm going to use it. So this is permanent again. I might just want to go over some other areas just to bring this color in gently. And I will leave my botanical at this point. And then I'm thinking here, I would like to add something more, but I am wondering if I should do it in wet or if I should wait. So I'll go and dry. So here we're going to overlap some of the marks that we made before. And if the paint from the marker hasn't dried, of course, it's going to smudge. So think about the effect that you want. And then just softening some of those lines. And while they're softening, I'm also going to add, oh, I'm going to add a touch of this paint right here. So now that it's got water, it's going to go really, really light to begin with, because remember, this is how intense it is. So I'm just going to do a bit of that. Now, if you wanted to wait for it to be completely dry, you could do that. But I'm just a bit impatient at the minute. Okay, so... I'm going to let it dry fully and then we'll revisit uh, some of the pieces here.